Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear students, our today's topic is very interesting. The topic is the forbidden tree. This is story about Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hazrat Hawa alayhi salam. When they were created in heavens, Allah forbade them to go near to this tree, a specific tree. They were not supposed to eat fruit of that tree. But they were deceived by, by Satan and he lured them to eat food from that tree. And that resulted in anger of Allah. But they did repent and then Allah SWT forgave them and sent them to earth. Now, what does that freedom exactly mean? That freedom means, similar to Prophet Adam in heavens, he, were, he, was, he and Hazrat Hawa was sent on earth with certain specific limited freedom and they were supposed to act within that freedom. And we are also supposed to act similarly in the limited freedom. If we go beyond that freedom, that would be count as wrongdoings. There are certain no-go areas, just like the, that forbidden tree in heaven for us. If we will not follow that, that we will keep on going towards those areas, that actions, those actions would be counted as wrongdoings. And if we stay away from those areas or actions, those would be counted as our good deeds. Now in slides, we will learn that what exactly that freedom means and what are other um, words to explain it. And also we will learn the definition of wrongdoings and bad deeds. Let me share my screen. The forbidden tree. So, in this lecture, the learning lessons are story of Adam and Eve and forbidden tree, importance of free will, which is freedom I was talking about. Let me reiterate these points. I think screen was not shared. The forbidden tree, learning lessons, story of Adam and Eve and forbidden tree, importance of free will, Human are best creations, creation of Allah SWT. Consequences of wrongful thoughts and actions, reward of good thoughts and actions. These are the important points which we are going to discuss today. Coming to the forbidden tree. The story of Adam and Eve, which is another name of Hazrat Adam and Hawa in English, is common to both the Bible and Quran. According to Quran, God created Adam and his wife, Eve, and settled the pair in paradise. Where was this paradise? The, the Bible is specific on this point. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and here he put the man whom he had formed. Genesis 2.8. This was the beginning of the social life of man. God gave both Adam and Eve basic direction. God said, O oh Adam, Settle you and your wife in paradise, eat freely from it anywhere you may wish, yet do not approach this tree, otherwise you become wrongdoers. The forbidden tree is one sense was symbol of social taboos, not permitted. Breaking those taboos mean, means involving oneself in social wrongdoing as mentioned in above Quranic verses. So the basically concept is same in Bible and Quran and those references have been provided on this slide. And this is explanation. When God created Adam and Eve, it was not just creating a pair. Rather, it was creating the first unit of society. Adam and Eve were not created to live simply as pair forever, but were destined to start a generation and form a society in very respect subsequently paving the way in every respect, subsequently paving the way for building of a civilization. Anything that proves to be harmful to one's fellow men is wrong. 
So this is basically definition of wrongdoing. Anything which is harm, harm, hurtful or harmful for your own self or for your fellow beings is called wrongdoing. We will read further about it. Adam and Eve were given complete freedom, but their freedom was limited freedom. They were to stop themselves from all activities which would go against their fellow men. In other words, they were forbidden to be in any kind of social wrongdoing harmful. Otherwise, they would fail to fulfill the divine plan. Now, what was divine plan? The plan which was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a thought in, in his scheme that this is how the world should be. And we, they were supposed to follow that plan. Okay. But they were unable to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a lesson for us as well. That if we will go beyond our freedom, we will also earn anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be companion of Satan. Now what is freedom? Importance of freedom. Other words for freedoms are free will, free choice or independence. What does that mean? It's individuals opportunity to perform an action out, out of many possibilities independently. Which means we can do anything what we want. We can do bad or good. We can do good, better or give our best. I mean, everything is in our hand in certain matters. Of course, we have limitations in, in various roles. If you are daughter or son, uh, you have to abide by your parents. Uh, you have to, if you are in the classroom, you have to abide by your teacher. So basically, but, but listening to them at the same time, you have certain kind of freedom within class or within home. So we are talking about that freedom. We have free choice like Prophet Adam, that, that, that highlighted sentence in the slide is saying same thing. Although we have to follow certain rules on earth, in various roles, wherever we are, whether we are parents, whether we are kids, whether we are students or teacher, in every role, we have certain actions choice. We can opt in something and we can opt out something. That is called freedom. Now, human are best creation of Allah SWT. How? Allah has created us best of creation because we have with we have following privileges. Intelligence, which is power to contemplate, contemplates Urdu is the Dabur. And the second one is guidance. Internal guidance, which comprises of conscience and instinct to do good. And there is external guidance, which is in form of Quran, Sunnah, parents, teacher, etc. And everything which teaches us lesson can be our guide. We can learn lesson from our bird, like how, um, how they, they, are, they, they travel in the form of groups. We can learn lesson from animals or, or plants. So nature is also our teacher. So this is source of guidance, different sources of guidance Allah has provided us so that we can we can make use of those experiences or guidance and we can easily choose among different choices and make use of our freedom now what is good deed now now we have learned about the freedom so we know that we have a choice to do good or to do bad so if you do good, what exactly it is? Let's read. We go about our lives performing good and charitable acts, whether they are listening to our parents, getting homework done on time, giving donations or helping our friends. These are all, these are all good acts and called good actions or good deeds. Some people do good deeds because they have good, na good natured soul, some for reputation and other for the reward and player of Allah. As a Muslim, I'll, I'll, let me explain this and then I'll read further. 
So this is definition of good deed. Anything which is for the benefit of your own self or benefit of somebody else counts as good deed. Now there are different purposes of the good deeds. Some people are good at heart. They 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 are just good. They just just they just like to do good with others and with themselves. And other people do it for reputation. Oh, so that other people say that this person is very pious and this person is really good. They just want to hear that thing from the people and other people do it for the reward and player of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as a Muslim, what we should do? Let's see. As a Muslim, we must be able to classify what a good deed entails and understand what makes our good deeds different from those of others. If a believer does a good deed, it cannot Islamically be classified as good deed unless it is done for sake of Allah. Why? Because it depends on whose classification by which you are labeling that as a good, as good, that deed as good. It says that that deed is not good deed if you are not doing it for sake of Allah. If you have some other interest that people should think you are very pious or or you or you are doing it for any other benefit, then it would would not count be counted as a good deed. If it is by your own interpretation or societies that this good, this deed is good, then by those standards, the deed is good. However, the reward for the deed is with them and not Allah. You cannot expect a reward from someone if you if you are if you are playing by someone else's role. For example, winning the second football division will not get you any reward for winning the football world cup. As you are in a different competition and playing against different opponents. Similarly, you cannot receive reward from Allah for any good deed. Good deed, unless the basis of the good basis of this deed being good stems from what Allah has told you. Your intention should be that you are doing it because He commanded it for His sake. So it's if you are doing something. Uh, first, first people, and you are expecting reward from Allah. It's just like you are playing for some other division, and you are expecting a trophy from other uh, division. Just, just like this example is given in the slide. So, whenever you are doing good deed, you have to make intention that you are doing it only for sake of Allah. That's that's the essence of good deeds. That's the definition of good deeds. Okay, wrong. What is wrong? What is wrongdoing? Anything that proves to be harmful to one's fellow man is wrongdoing. In other words, Adam and Eve were required to follow the well-known formula, you are free, where your freedom ends, where others' nose begins. This was the first social lesson given to the first man. As well as having freedom was granted him, man was created with great qualities, all kinds of resources to allow him to make use of his talent. Thus, man potentially was the master of his environment. He was able to create a world of his own with the sole condition that he should not misuse his freedom. He must stop from approaching the forbidden tree. Now, Allah uh, created Prophet Adam with all, so, with all kind of in, uh, sources, including intelligence, and provided him all other sources. Allah just said, you have everything, just don't go near that tree. Allah limited his freedom and that is what expected from us. And also, freedom does not mean that we should keep on interfering other people's personal matters. It ends where others, another's nose begins, means it ends where our personal matter ends and the other person's personal matter starts. So that's the whole concept of wrongdoing. Anything which you are going to hurt uh, yourself or anybody, or anything which is creation of Allah Ta'ala that is wrongdoing. Moral of story. If the members of society stop themselves from indulging in harmful activities and all use their freedom within their limits, then in such a society, everyone will be able to develop his personality. Moreover, the society will grow in every way for the better. Living in such society is living like living in paradise. Now, we can think a little bit more about it, that why Allah Ta'ala kept this limit on us, the limit of freedom, limit, limit of free choice, 
we have free choice but allah taala why he is limiting us because he wants to prepare us he wants to make us personalities who are worthy of living in paradise because you must have heard that the people of paradise would be highest in moral they would be they would be highest in ethics morality and they would be high caliber personality so allah taala is increasing and enhancing our caliber while we are on this earth so that's the whole purpose of this free will and then keeping the limit on that free will. i hope you understood the concept i have some uh, pictorial illustrations that how we can do good deeds uh, you can help your family members by doing cleaning and some other chores at home and this is example of wrong doing this girl must be a forbidden by his mom to not uh, spill the milk or not use the milk or not pour the milk by all by herself but she did it anyway and this is the consequence sharing is caring so it is also good deed when you you are sharing something you are making someone happy this is counted as a good deed annoying your siblings or friend is a bad deed if your i know you guys are out of this age but this is just an example for little kids if your younger siblings are doing something they are drawing on the wall and you, they are not supposed to and they are not listening to their parents this is also bad deed now that that is end of our discussion and explanation through slides this is uh, activity for your class and i would request uh, your amazing teachers in the class that please monitor this activity the activity is you have to uh, write down actions for paradise slash heaven and actions for hell now it's obvious the action of paradise will be good deeds and action of hell would be bad deeds so write down five examples for each and it can be the, the examples i have already given you in the pictures it can be as smaller as um giving water to someone and the bad deeds could be cursing someone right name calling it can be another example so you have to write down in your own words five actions of each category and your responses will be submitted to me thank you so much and uh, we will be together soon with another amazing topic assalam alaikum warahmatullah